it's Joanne here, the Falcon Lady, and here is our episode on Team Feathers visiting with their very good friend, Dr. Collis from Glenview Animal 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 Hospital, Animal Animal, Glenview Animal Hospital, and this is Dr. Collis's team recording everything for us. Now we're going to start off with Mojave. He's going to get a physical with Dr. Collis. So there's going to be a brief pause in the festivities while we switch over and get him all set up in the cast with Joey so that Dr. Collis can give him the once over. So we'll be right back. Once again, we're back. Joey has now got Mojave in the cast. He's in his casting jacket saying, I'm a nice guy, please don't eat me. And Dr. Collis, we're going to go over to you and you're going to talk about everything that we're going to look at for Mojave today. Okay. So we're doing the physical exam and uh, raptors as opposed to a lot of our other animals. It is, uh, it's a lot more brief and it's probably a lot less hands-on. Um, these are essentially wild birds, so the actual handling of them tends to be much more focused. Um, the risk is you might miss things, um, but you want to make sure you look at sort of the major systems to get an idea. We rely heavily on the history as well to make sure that the birds, and having a really well-established trust in the owner's observations is critical, I think, to the overall success of a physical exam. Okay. So uh, much of this is done sort of just from, from a distance observation. So with Mojave, I'm looking to make sure that bright, alert, responsive is this bird's mentation acting normally. Level of hydration is assessment from the oral cavity, the amount of moisture in the mucous membrane, the position and appearance of the eyes, do they appear to be nice and normal as well? Does the bird seem like they are, um, are they acting normally? So uh, using my light source, just looking to see if we've got, paying attention to what's going on here, I would be checking for just a bit of a response from the eyes. Okay. Again, I'm not doing what I would normally do with many of our other patients where I'd be checking the pupillary light response. Birds have some more voluntary control over that, so it's a little harder to do. Looking at the oral cavity, we've got really nice pink mucous membranes. We see nothing to suggest frowns being present and no signs of any unusual oral plaques or oral injuries. The beak itself also appears to be nice and normal. We've got a really good um, the position or the, uh, uh, the wear on the beak appears to be nice and normal, and everything looks quite symmetrical. Okay, so following my hand around, just kind of a crude assessment of vision. Okay, so we have no problem being able to look and say that. Okay, see that works. All right, from there, so we're going to try and examine those ears. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay, so let's see. Let's get to behind you. There we go. Okay. So just very gently holding the head, I'm looking at the nares very closely. I'm not seeing any signs of any trouble there, just palpation over top of the head and the neck. All feels very normal. Okay. Okay, everything palpates quite nice and normal. So just using a cotton tip swab, just in case that blunt end, if it gets away on you. Uh, you want to just have a look to make sure there's no unusual signs of any discharges that are coming in and around the ears. Now, these are a heavily, heavily feathered uh, type of bird, so the actual visualization of the ear canal sometimes is a bit of a challenge, but it's located back in this neighborhood. Owls, it's really easy to see, of course. They've got massive ear canals, but uh, some of these birds are probably a little tougher to see. Just, no, I'm not really going to see much of it here, am I? Mm, you're not going to show me much. I'm not, so palpating over the region here, there's no palpable signs of any abnormalities just in and around the head and the neck. Okay, so that all feels pretty good. Just feeling now, going down the front, uh, over top of the neck region, over the crop, till we get to the level of the sternum. Do you need the strap loosening at all, or? Yeah, actually, that probably wouldn't be a bad plan. Okay. Uh, For everybody watching, this is a, a Velcro strap. Makes for a very fast release on the casting jacket. So what I'm palpating now down is the region of the crop so you can feel where it goes down inside the salomic cavity um, and I'm feeling over top of the keel bone so I'm assessing the amount of flight muscling that's there so we've got some pretty good happy uh, feeling pectoral muscle masses there. Um, there's a little bit of a difference between birds who are in condition they so it's safe for, for flight when they're actually trained um, or like when they're out conditioned. Uh, I, I'm not a falconer myself so I don't actually have any real experience, I'm just going on general principles. And as I reach down toward the bottom here, so we've got a good full muscling. Might be a spot, you kind of part the feathers and have a look at the skin again. 
This is a, uh, most of the birds of prey, the North American um, raptors are, are usually very heavily feathered, but you can get an idea of parting the feathers through the, all the downy feathers, having a look at the skin. This is an area where you can actually visually part the feathers and you can see the keel bone. Okay. So we've got decent muscling off to either side of the keel bone. Uh, if we have birds that are down, birds that are ill, you'll oftentimes find there's injuries to the keel bone because if they, if they are pressure resting on there, that's an area where you would start to look for lesions. And I see nothing of the sort here, so it's good. Okay, so I'm just going to let go of Mojave's head here. I'll just loosely put that strap back on there. We never ever want to restrict the uh, chest cavity from being able to do that keel moving back and forth. They rely on that like a set of bellows to be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. So too tight a restraint of that can lead to a bird causing severe respiratory problems. Okay, so I'm going to skip over the feet just at the moment. Just have a look here at the back end. So we're having a look at the tail, having a look at the vent. Probably poking around here, a little dark down there, but the feathering underneath here seems to be good. There's no signs of any fecal material sticking to the tail, and they're usually meticulously clean. So, uh, okay, we'll have a look at the feet. So, bumblefoot being the one big thing we tend to have to really be keep an eye out for. Cotton tip swab. Okay, a definite area of the body that commands respect for sure. <laughs> so, so those things aren't just pretty to look at, they're also highly functional and your skin is just flesh, so you want to respect them. So we're looking for any signs of any abnormal pattern or uh, wear pattern happening down here in the toes or in the feet. These look beautiful. The digits all look to be nice and normal. The nails all look beautiful there on that foot. And looking at the opposite side, same sort of thing. We're having a good look at each of the toes and up here in the, the pad in the middle there. That all looks very happy. Very good. Um, not so much in young birds, but sometimes you get birds that have um, articular gout, especially if they're really aged birds in the collection. So we're always trying to also make sure that we've got no signs of swelling of the digits. It can be a sign that birds have got kidney problems, as, uh, among other things. So, okay. okay. All right. So from this point, <clears throat> uh, we're going to want to reposition to be able to just feel over the top of the back okay. and uh, look for any sort of unusual or unwelcome ones around. Okay, folks, so Joey is back with Scirocco. Um, now, because Scirocco doesn't really enjoy being cast very much, and um, it can turn into something like uh, a Tasmanian double situation, we're just going to do a before and after, and uh, then Dr. Cullis can sort of give us a rundown on how Scirocco did with his physical, and we'll get back to you in a few minutes' time. Hang in there. Step. All right, so Dr. Collis, how did Scirocco do? Quite well. Uh, a little feisty. That's <laughs> <laughs> not unusual. So, but yeah, overall general physical exam is nicely uneventful and uh, lots, of, lots of get up and go for sure. Of course, yes, it's full of PND. Yes. So last but not least is going to be Halo. And we're going to uh, shampoo, rinse, repeat. So we're, we're not going to show you that part, folks, but we are going to show you something really nifty in a little bit here with Halo. And um, Dr. Collis will be explaining the, the process and why we do it. But we're going to get through the physical with, with Halo and uh, then let him have sort of a coffee break with Joey out in the front of the, uh, the clinic <laughs> for two minutes. Let him calm down. The Mojave Shirai...